the free and easy bliss of humans and gods, as well as the various joys of all the destinies. All the destinies such as the Asuras and so on, the beings within each destiny believe that their particular destiny contains all kinds of happiness and the multitude of happiness from the rules and powers of Vigo, concentration and the others. The five rules are faith, Vigo, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom. In the text, Vigo and concentration also represent the other three from the five rules come strength and power, so they become the five powers. If one attains the five rules and the five powers, one derives a certain kind of bliss. All of those come from bringing forth the mind. One can obtain those various kinds of merit and virtue and bliss by bringing forth the body mind. Sutra, by means of the cause of bringing forth the vast mind, one is then able to cultivate the six parameters, encouraging all beings to practice proper conduct and to receive peace and happiness within the triple realm. Dwelling in the Buddha's unobstructed wisdom of the genuine meaning, all wondrous karma is completely proclaimed. He is able to cause measureless living beings to totally cut off delusion and karma and to go to to go towards nirvana. His wisdom light is like the pure sun. His many practices are perfect like the full moon. His merit and virtue is always overflowing like the great ocean. He is undefined and unobstructed just like empty space. Everywhere producing vows of limitless merit and virtue, all of which bestow happiness upon all living beings, exhausting the boundaries of the future, relying on vows to practice, he always diligently cultivates to cross over living beings. His measureless great vows are difficult to conceive. He vows to cause living beings to be completely pure. His vows are empty without appearances or a place of reliance. Because of the strength of his vows, everything clearly manifests. Commentary by means of the cause of bringing forth the vast might on the causal ground, the Bodhisattva who has brought forth the Bodhi might produces a vast might and vows. He vows to cross over all living beings, to cut off all afflictions, to learn all Buddha dharmas, to and to perfect the unsurpassed path of the Buddha. One is then able to cultivate the six parameters. Because one has produced vast vows, one is able to cultivate the six parameters of giving, upholding precepts, patience, vigor, dhyana, concentration, and wisdom. Encouraging all beings to practice proper conduct he is able to exhort all beings to cultivate the proper conduct of body and to receive peace and happiness within the triple realm. Within the desire, form and formless realms, he always causes all beings to obtain security and joy. Dwelling in the Buddha's unobstructed wisdom of the genuine meaning, he is able to abide in the Buddha's state of the completely fused an obstructed substance and the real mark that is genuine wisdom. All wondrous karma is completely proclaimed. He proclaims and explains all the subtle and wondrous dharma doors for living beings in order to teach and transform them. He is able to cause measureless living beings to totally cut off delusion and karma and to go to words nirvana. He is able to cause living beings to cut off karma and delusion and to cultivate the drama of still extinction. Delusion includes cause delusion, subtle delusion, the delusion like dust and sand, as well as view delusion, delusion of self and the delusion of ignorance, all of these various kinds of delusion. His wisdom light is like the pure sun, the Buddha's wisdom light and the wisdom light cultivated and perfected by the Bodhisattva 
are like the pure sun. His many practices are perfect like the full moon. The six perfections and ten thousand practices which the Bodhisattva has cultivated to perfection are complete like the full moon. His merit and virtue is always overflowing like the great ocean. All of his merit and virtue, whether great or small, is always overflowing, full and complete, the same as the great ocean. All of the river less return to the ocean. And he is undefined and unobstructed, just like empty space. He is also without defilement or the slightest bit of obstruction, just like empty space. Everywhere producing vows of limitless merit and virtue, the Bodhisattva brings forth vows of measureless, limitless, great merit and virtue, all of which bestow happiness upon all living beings. He wishes to give all beings all kinds of happiness, exhausting the boundaries of the future, relying on vows to practice. It's not that he just cultivates like this for a single life, but in life after life, exhausting the boundaries of the future, he cultivates in this way and relies on his vows to practice. He always diligently cultivates to cross over living beings. He is forever without laziness as he courageously and vigorously cultivates in order to widely cross over all beings. His measureless great vows are difficult to conceive. The measureless, limitless great vows which the Bodhisattva has produced are truly inconceivable. He vows to cause living beings to be completely pure. He makes vows because he wants all beings to obtain purity. His vows are empty without appearances or a place of reliance. Everything that the Bodhisattva cultivates is without attachment, empty and without a single mark. So although he makes vows, he is not attached to them. He also doesn't rely on anything because of the strength of his vows, everything clearly manifests. Because of the power of the vows he's made, everything whatsoever very clearly appears. Sutra, he comprehends that the self-nature is like empty space, still and distinct, and totally equal. Drama dolls are numberless and ineffable. For the sake of living beings, he proclaims them without any attachments. All of the first commands of the world systems of the ten directions, all together, Lord, bringing forth the might, bringing forth of the might. This might is measureless and adorned with virtue. It is able to arrive at the other shore, the same as the Buddha. Throughout compass, as numerous as living beings, in speaking of its merit and virtue, still it cannot be exhausted. It abides in the vast household of the first come ones. No dharmas of the triple realm can compare with it. Desiring to know all Buddha dharmas, one should quickly bring forth the body mind. This mind, almost amongst all merit and virtue, is the most supreme. One will certainly obtain the first commands and obstructed wisdom. The activities in the minds of living beings can be calculated and known. Lands, particles of dust are the same way. The, the limits of space can readily be measured, yet the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind cannot be fathomed. Commentary He comprehends that the self-nature is like empty space. The Bodhisattva comprehends that the self-nature of all dharmas is like empty space. It is still and extinct, extinct and totally equal. The basic substance of dharmas is still and extinct and therefore and equal. Dharma doors are numberless and ineffable, and he knows that dharma doors are also numberless, measureless, limitless, and ineffably ineffable in number. For the sake of living beings, he proclaims them without any attachments. Although Dharma dolls are ineffably ineffable, he wishes to teach and transform, rescue, and cross over living beings. 
within the ineffable the dharma is spoken for them yet when he speaks dharma he is without any attachment all the first comers of the world systems of the ten directions all together a lot bringing forth of the mind all of them together a lot embrace the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind this mind is measureless and adorned with the virtue the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the body mind is measureless limitless and cannot be spoken of completely it is adorned by all merit and virtue it is able to arrive at the other shore the same as the buddha the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the body mind is able to arrive at the other shore of nirvana it is of the same substance as the buddha throughout compass as numerous as living beings throughout great compass as many as living beings in speaking of its merit and virtue still it cannot be exhausted one cannot finish speaking of the merit and virtue of first bringing forth the mind it abides in the vast household of the first come ones because of the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the body mind the bodhisattva abides in the home of the buddhas and no dharmas of the triple realm can compare with it none of the dharmas and analogies of the desire form and formless realms can compare with the merit and virtue from first bringing form bringing forth the mind desiring to know all buddha dharmas if one wishes to understand all the dharmas spoken by the buddha one should quickly bring forth the buddhi mind one should certainly bring forth the buddhi mind quickly this mind amongst all merit and virtue is the most supreme amongst all merit and virtue the buddhi mind is the most supreme and one will certainly obtain the first comers and abstracted wisdom one will surely obtain the buddha's wisdom which is without any obstruction the activities in the minds of living beings can be calculated and known it is possible to figure out the number of minds of living beings what they think and their different kinds of behavior also lens particles dust are the same way one can also figure out how many particles of dust there are in all lands the limits of space can readily be measured although space has no boundaries one can still measure and determine its limits yet the merit and virtue from bringing forth the mind can not be fathomed however no one is able to fathom and know how great is the merit and virtue from bringing forth the body mind sutra it produces all buddhas of the three buddhas of time it achieves all the happiness of the world increasing all supreme merit and virtue it forever casts off all doubts and delusions revealing and proclaiming all wondrous states exhaustively doing away with all obstructions it brings to completion all pure shastras and produces the wisdom of all first come ones if one wishes to see all buddhas of the ten directions if one wishes to give an exhaust exhaustible treasury of merit and virtue if one wishes to give an inexhaustible treasury of merit and virtue and if one wants to put an end to living being sufferings and afflictions one should quickly bring forth the body mind commentary why does the text say that no one is able to know a fathom the merit and virtue from first bringing forth the body mind because it produces all buddhas of the three buddhas of time all buddhas of the ten directions and uh, the three buddhas of time come into being because of the body mind it achieves all the happiness of the world all the various kinds of bliss come from bringing forth the body mind increasing all supreme merit and virtue the body mind is able to increase all supreme merit and virtue it forever cuts off all doubts and delusions it forever cuts off the karmic obstruction of all doubts
revealing and proclaiming all wondrous states, exhaustively doing away with all obstruction. If you bring forth the body mind, you can get rid of whatever obstructions you have, as it brings to completion all pure shetras. It brings to completion and adorns all the pure Buddha shetras of the ten directions and produces the wisdom of all thirst come ones. If one wishes to see all Buddhas of the ten directions, don't you wish to see the Buddhas? Then you should bring forth the body mind. If you do so, you can see the Buddhas of the ten directions. If one wishes to give an inexhaustible treasury of merit and virtue, if you wish to achieve a measureless, limitless, and endless treasury of merit and virtue, you should also bring forth the body mind. And if one wants to put an end to living beings' sufferings and afflictions, if you wish to end and destroy living beings' sufferings and difficulties. Then you should very quickly bring forth the body mind. So the text concludes with this exhortation: One should quickly bring forth the body mind.